This ambassador works for the mayor of Pittsburgh, Bill Podato, and is involved in solutions for inner city youth issues such as youth unemployment. Please welcome Latrenda. The floor is yours. The floor is mine. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so grateful for the opportunity in Bangkok. Today, I'm going to interview some great city leaders and executives and talk about what they're doing in their city and how they're leading urban innovation. So, I'd like to introduce or reintroduce to you an international leader who has over 20 years of experience in elected office and someone who continues to champion the youth of this city and who has hosted us so graciously. Please give a round of applause to the governor of Bangkok, Governor Parabatra. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce you to another leader with nearly 30 years of experience in politics. Despite his current high office, he manages to still find time to volunteer with local nonprofit organizations and charities in his area. And on the weekends, from what I've heard recently, he maps out all of the bake sales in his city and tries to get to every single one of them. Please put your hands together for the mayor of the 2016 One Young World host city, Mayor Jim Watson of Ottawa. Oh, <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to jump right into the questions. So I work for a mayor. Um, a mayor in Pittsburgh, and he has said that he wants to welcome any refugee that is fleeing terror and crisis in their city. Specifically, he has spoken up about the, the recent crisis in Syria. How should city executives respond to the ongoing refugee crisis? In Thailand, the question of foreign presence in any shape or form is the responsibility of the central government. The issue that is closest to us in the city is the issue of migrant workers, foreign la labor. Uh, probably there are a ma million foreign workers in, in Bangkok who are here for one reason or another. Uh, we help the government in registering them so that to make sure that they, are, they can be looked after better uh, but only three, about 300,000 are registered. We do our best. We give them medical treatment on the same basis as Thai, Thais, and perhaps more importantly for the children that accom accompany them, we allow them to enter our, our schools on the same condition as uh, our own children. Uh, <laughs> And uh, there are now over 2,000 uh, foreign workers, children, in our schools. And I would like to add that if, should the government change policy towards uh, refugees, we're perfectly willing and capable of assisting their stay in Bangkok. Awesome, awesome. Mayor Watson, same question. Well, I think the answer is very clear. We should open our hearts, our arms, and our borders to these people who are in desperate straits uh, throughout the world, particularly those from Syria. And just a few weeks ago, uh, Canada elected a new government, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who was uh, <laughs> very popular. <laughs> And he made a very firm commitment, and his government, in, in just the last uh, week and a half, have been working very hard uh, to welcome 25,000 Syrian refugees by the end of this year. It's an ambitious goal, but it's the kind of goal that I think every country should strive for to, to help um, our fellow human beings. You know, we've seen um, 
uh, this before. History does repeat itself. And we've seen when borders were shut off to the Jews during the uh, Holocaust uh, era. We've seen it uh, tragedy with the genocide in, in countries in Africa. And we should not repeat the same mistake. Yes, we have to obviously ensure that there's proper screening to ensure that individuals coming through are who they say they are. But uh, these individuals are facing uh, this terrible situation where they're being punted from uh, country to country and uh, the entire community, the global community, has to rise up and recognize what if we were in their situation and we had uh, this terrible plight with young children living in camps uh, and the cold is coming to that part of the, the world. Uh, we have a moral obligation to do what we can and uh, our city uh, hosted a, a town hall meeting a few weeks ago. We had a thousand people come to City Hall wanting to know how they could help. We have organizations, a, a great group called Refugee 613, community-based. Uh, it is uh, working to uh, contact individuals who can provide clothing and furniture. Uh, our schools are going to welcome all of the children. Our health care system uh, amendments have been made to ensure that every refugee has full 100% health care when they arrive in Canada because it's the right thing to do. So with that, building on that question, a lot of people in many of our world's largest cities are reacting to the fear or the per perceived fear of terror in their, their areas, um, given the attacks in Paris and Beirut. Um, this is also um, coupled with a strong hint of xenophobia. Both of your cities have suffered from terrorist attacks in the last year. As a city executive, what is it like having responsibility um, having the responsibility for keeping your citizens safe while still remaining a welcoming city. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Again, uh, security is uh, the main responsibility of, of uh, the central government, but I have not uh, stopped at trying to increase at least a sense of security through a number of measures. One measure is uh, to install uh, closed circuit TV cameras. Oh. And in the six years I've been uh, governor, uh, we have installed about 50,000 throughout the city, city, city. And we're in the process of linking up the signals, uh, their signals. Uh, we probably are halfway through right now. And we give the police you know, pictures from our uh, our cameras all the time, which uh, assists the police in the in the, 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 dis the discharge of their responsibility. And our personnel also work very closely with the security forces, especially our city police and also, uh, and our fire and rescue department. Our me medical emergency services are linked with the central government. So we work very, very closely uh, together. But the main thing that we could do, I feel, is psychological. The, city, the people of the city of Bangkok uh, feel more comfortable if, in a crisis, their elected representative is there, even though he may, be, may not be empowered to do everything he would like to do. And in the August incident that we just underwent, uh, I think people were, uh, felt a little bit easier that I was around mm -hmm. just a few minutes after the, the bombing. Wow. Wow. So having their elected representative around, I think, is a very good psychological boost when a city is uh, gripped with fear. Thank you. Mayor Watson. <laughs> You know, I think in, in many ways we've seen in the last few days, in the last few weeks, uh, the best and worst of humanity. Uh, the worst when you see mosques that are attacked and vandalized and torched and you see uh, women in, in um, niqabs who are being uh, spat upon. But at the same time, there are these glimmers of hope where you, you see the best in humanity where um, a couple I read about just the other day 
uh, said they don't want wedding gifts for their wedding. They want all of the money that would have gone into wedding gifts to go into refugee relief uh, to help a family uh, locate in Canada. We've seen uh, kids uh, host uh, uh, cupcake sales at their schools to raise money to support a refugee family. And of course, security is, is paramount in, in any jurisdiction. But uh, there are ways and means of dealing with that and at the same time opening your borders uh, so that those individuals who are in dire straits can get the help they need and start a new life uh, uh, without fear of uh, suppression and military action and threat to their own personal being. Uh, we have in Ottawa, Canada, a very proud tradition of welcoming refugees. During the 1970 Vietnamese boat people crisis, uh, our uh, city welcomed 4,000 uh, boat people who are now tremendous contributors to the economic and social fabric of our society. Uh, we should not be fearful of these men, women and children. We should embrace them because uh, they need our help. And my hope is that the tragedy that took place in Paris is not going to sway those strong and principled leaders from caving in like we're seeing in some jurisdictions where uh, governors in, in the United States are saying they're closing their borders in the states to refugees. First of all, they don't have that authority under the Constitution, but secondly, it's morally wrong for them to, to uh, jump on this uh, bandwagon of assuming these men and women who are escaping terrorists are terrorists themselves. And so before we go to our last question of the panelists, I want to queue up the individuals that have questions from the floor. Um, so we have Charles Lapunga from Malawi and um, Alex, I'm not going to pronounce your last name because I'm going to mess it up from Greece. <laughs> Simonoglu. <laughs> awesome. So if you could please go to the mics as I ask the last question. So. The last question I want to inquire about is the role of youth in government, particularly diverse young people who are usually not the most or the underrepresented in your cities. Often youth who are um, uh, in, in large cities have been characterized as being disengaged in local politics and government. What can mayors and city executives do to engage young people and promote inclusive young voices in its country's future? By hosting One Young World. <laughs> we, uh, we spent a lot of time and money on the young. We have schools, and not only schools, uh, many places of uh, learning outside classrooms. And uh, these are used very widely throughout the city. And in these, uh, at these centers, we encourage them to show their, their uh, capacity, to do constructive things, <coughs> capacity that, uh, to demonstrate their willingness to participate in a number of activities. And in many schools, we encourage uh, election. Mm. Or, you know, uh, the younger children would contest to be, to be uh, the, the leaders of the school. And I, I think this is a, a very good thing. But our, I, I feel that our job is not to drag everyone into politics. Our job is to prepare all our children and youth to be responsible adults. And in our schools, we are the first, Bangkok is the first government agency in, in Thailand who has introduced as a, an integral part of the syllabus, uh, a course on, um, on the, the evil of corruption and the necessi necessity of, uh, of uh, have leading a moral life, an ethical life, a, a responsible life. And this, 
this, uh, this part of the syllabus has been borrowed by other schools uh, increasingly over the last four years. So we, are, we feel that we're go, uh, going in the right direction to prepare our uh, younger generations to be responsible adults. And should they be interested in politics, I think, uh, uh, responsible adults are more likely to be interested in politics than not. Awesome. So he said preparation, education, and money. Okay. Mayor Jim Watson. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I agree with the governor. I think these kinds of conferences, One Young World, and we're so honored to host it next year. How many of you are coming to Ottawa next year? <laughs> we're, governor, we're, we're not as hot as uh, Bangkok. We're cool, but we're not as hot. Uh, it's 12 <laughs> degrees in Ottawa today, and uh, it's, I think, 40 degrees in Bangkok uh, right now. But I think one of the, the things that we have to do a better job of is, is as politicians, uh, we have to go out and better educate students on the responsibilities of civic or municipal government. We just had our federal election where the voter turnout in some areas of Ottawa was 80%, and yet in the municipal election, it was about 40%. And I go to schools quite often when I'm invited to speak to the students because they study civics in grade five and grade 10. And it's interesting, the grade five students always want to know if I have a limousine and how much money I make and do I have bodyguards and things like that. But when I start telling them about the importance of the city government and I ask them to think about uh, over the course of the day, they wake up in the morning, their alarm clock goes off, it's powered by hydro which is run by the city. They turn the tap off to uh, ta turn the tap on to brush their teeth. That's a city service. They flush the toilet. City service. They walk on a sidewalk. It's run by the city. They get on a city bus. Then after school, they come back. They go to a pool or a rec center or a soccer field. Those are city services. And the city, in most cases in Canada, touches individuals 40 or 50 times a day. Yet, ironically, we have the lowest voter turnout and um, not that many people know what, what a city does. So I think we have to go out uh, through our councillors and through our mayors and uh, speak and listen to students, find out what their frustrations are, and really try to do their, our best uh, to not simply show up every four years looking for their vote when they're in university or college, but more importantly, show up between elections to let them know that uh, you may be young, you may not be a taxpayer per se right now, but you have every right to hold our feet to the fire, question our authority, uh, push us in a different direction, and help us make our cities and towns and villages better places to live, work, play, and visit. Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to go to Charles from Malawi. All right, ask your question. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Charles, I'm from Malawi, and I am the 2013 award-winning architect from Africa, 2014 Future Africa Leaders Award winner, 2015 uh, award winner for uh, Drivers of Change. I'm happy to be in this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be in this award-winning city. So um, I, I'm, I am also the co-founder of Maestro's Leadership Company uh, that was just recently awarded as the best uh, social enterprising company in Malawi. Um, thank you. Uh, we have impacted more than 41,000 young people since January in 21 countries. Um, my question basically goes in two angles, as an architect and as a leader, so that you can help us to prepare our future the future generation. We are going into smart cities very soon. We have, intro we have introduced Internet of Things. And uh, how can you help us prepare the young people that are unemployed today and the young people that are unskilled today? How can we help us to prepare those young people to, for the future cities? Our cities are going um, smart. They are electrified and digitalized. So how can you help us? to prepare that. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Governor. We, it will take a very long time to, we, 
in the short term, we help uh, the unemployed or those seeking new types of employment by having these centers to develop uh, skills, mm -hmm. professional skills, but, and other measures. But over the longer term, and we are very excited by, by this, uh, this project, in 16 years' time, Bangkok will celebrate the 250th anniversary of being the capital city of Thailand. And we have a major city renewal project, uh, which, which would cover about 160 uh, square kilometers, uh, nearly uh, one-tenth of the whole city. And a part of this project is to create commercial and bi business epicenters near the communities and also to promote community-based uh, tourism. I think once we bring commercial business tourism activities into the lo localities, <coughs> this can be a big job-creating uh, effort. And hopefully, we can do our bit. Once the project starts running, we can help out with the unemployment problem in a more uh, permanent and structural way. Awesome. Thank you. I think, uh, first of all, to, to congratulate uh, our young leader and his many accomplishments and continue the good work you're doing in your home country. Uh, I would um, say one of the things that we're doing to um, challenge uh, the economic uh, uh, problems that uh, the world is facing right now is uh, to invest in our cities. We now have a provincial and a federal government that are in sync that understand that spending and investing heavily in infrastructure is not only good for the environment and the economy, but it's also good for job creation, particularly entry-level jobs. We're building a new light rail transit system that is under construction now that is creating literally thousands of person years of employment over the next uh, couple of years. Uh, we also uh, have a plan to completely clean up our beautiful Ottawa River called the Ottawa River Action Plan that's uh, invested hundreds of millions of dollars by three levels of government. And it's a, a matter of really coordinating with the levels of government and not sort of passing the buck as too many politicians do and say, well, that's the federal government or that's the provincial. It's all our collective responsibility to get our act together, to get these projects underway. Our, our light rail transit system is going to reduce uh, greenhouse gases by 94,000 tons on an annual basis. It will be our single largest contribution to uh, climate change and to the elimination of greenhouse gases or the reduction of greenhouse gases in our city's history. Mm. That's infrastructure. <laughs> and uh, I think, um, you know, again, our federal government just got elected on a promise to run a deficit for three years to kickstart the economy and recognizing with record uh, interest rate lows, now is the time to borrow, put people back to work, get these projects underway, and create better cities of the future. Awesome. Can I just, just add? Yeah. Uh, to keep things in perspective, in, uh, in Thailand, uh, the problem of unemployment is, is not acute. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have a very big uh, agricultural sector still, mm -hmm. and this sector consists of small farms. Mm -hmm. So those who have sought employment in the, in the cities, if they could not find jobs, or if they uh, lose jobs, they can always go back. It's not the best solution, but at least uh, they can keep going oh. as a part of the productive system of the country. So, so we are maybe a little, a little bit different from many other countries, Thank fortunately. You. Thank you. Now we're gonna go to our last question. Um, Alex from Greece, and we're gonna make it pretty brief. We're running low on time. Um, so Alex, could you ask your... Well, Hello, um, I'm Alex Simonogu from Greece, working for Johnson & Johnson. If you'd allow me uh, 30 seconds before I get to my question to ask a pledge. So this is to the mayor of um, Ottawa. We talked a lot about yesterday about stateless people, and we are people from 196 countries here. I actually have two countries. I'm half Greek, half English, so I'm very, very privileged in that way. Everyone here is young leaders, 
made a pledge to help on um, stateless people. So, and this is a pledge that comes from my colleague Nancy here. She gave me the idea, so it's good that she's next to me. If every single one of us, as young leaders next year, brings one stateless person to Ottawa, will you welcome them into your city? <laughs> Come on. We, we talk about action. This is where we can help really bring the refugee crisis on the ground and make our efforts to make a difference for the world. Well, well, certainly uh, my hope is uh, by that time, uh, given the commitment our Prime Minister has made, uh, we will have 25,000 uh, refugees uh, in Canada. At that point, we'll not be Canadian citizens, so in essence we'll be stateless, uh, but sponsored by the government and looking for citizenship. And uh, I very much welcome those young people who have landed in our country to take part in the One Young World in Ottawa. It will be a great, great opportunity. Awesome. All righty. So we're going to wrap up. Um, thank you for that call to action, Alex. So I'd like to thank Your Excellency Governor Per Batra of Bangkok and Your Worship Mayor Jim Watson for participating today. That ends our session and hopefully each of us has heard something and one thing that will inspire us to get involved in our local government. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. thank you so much. Huge round of applause. Well done. That was brilliant.